Hello and welcome to the Friends Talk Film Podcast, episode number five. I'm your host, Kenan Ackler, and with me today are my guests, Sasha and Leo. How are you doing, guys? I'm good. Wow, that's yeah. he's real good. <laughs> Best intro ever. Yeah, no, I'm great. Um, I'm good. <laughs> if you're new to the show, we are lifelong friends and we love and debate film on a daily basis. So we bring you the latest movie news and we bring you our thoughts and opinions on that. Um, so on today's hot topics, um, we've got uh, Wreck It Ralph 2, uh, Blade Runner sequel update, uh, Daniel Craig joins the film Kings. Dungeons & Dragons Reboot, Kingsman The Golden Circle, Pacific Rim 2 Release Date and Cast Update, Minecraft The Movie, The Lego Movie Franchise, The Man From Nowhere Remake, and Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge. Um, we're also going to have some trader, trader reactions uh, regarding The Mechanic Resurrection, Sully, Why Him, and War Dogs. Um, also, we're going to have a regular spots of uh, the film Flashback, the Channel Flick Challenge, and we'll wrap up with the box office review. Um, please note we will be discussing full spoilers for all the subjects we're talking about today. If there's a particular film that you don't want to hear about or know some detail about, please skip ahead to the next section. Uh, follow the guide on the images below in the screen. And um, please note we are friends. The humour and discussions get personal, so expect it to be adult humour. Um, right, uh, so we'll go straight into our first topic. Um, so Disney announces uh, the Wreck-It Ralph sequel for um, 2018. Um, they had a great hit in 2012 with Wreck-It Ralph, took um, 471 million at the worldwide box office. Um, it was kind of an original property that yep. had lots of uh, concept, uh, but the concept was it had obviously a lot of licensed uh, video games and characters and cameos supporting roles and stuff with it. Um, personally, I love the first movie. It was fantastic. So um, John C. Riley is going to be back. And the premise for the movie is going to be set six years after the first movie. And it's going to be somehow Wreck-It Ralph breaking the internet. So it's going to kind of shift from the old school arcades to go into that kind of modern era. Um, director, Ron Hacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so director Rich Moore, he also directed this year's Zootopia for Disney, which again was a fantastic movie. Just caught it a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he's already given one indication they might have a nod to Tron. Um, in mm-hmm. the new one as well, whether it's a supporting character or sort of maybe the environment, because again, that's a Disney property as well. So it's got a March 9th, 2018 release date. Um, it's just three weeks before Warner Brothers and Steven Spielberg's adaptation of Ready Player One, which is going to be another games based movie. Um, what are we thinking about Wreck It Ralph? Uh, it should be pretty good. Rich Moore's also got a long history with Matt Groening from The Simpsons. He yep. directed mm-hmm. many episodes of Futurama and um, The Simpsons. From back in the day, he's also done, you know, he's done a lot of, of you know, off-key comedy animation, like the TV show Drawn Together, which is also kind of like... Oh, you know, John, video, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, he's well, so he's well inversed with, like, video games and stuff like that. He's a, you know, um, if you haven't seen Zootopia, you've missed out. It's a yeah. fantastic movie. It, it's, Cesar Palace. It's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to our friend Cesar Palace and he'll hook you up with a copy. Um, either way, um, yeah, um... Yeah, fantastic theater director. The first movie was fantastic. I'm hoping they worked the deal out with Nintendo, which they didn't do first That's time. Right. Whooping Super Mario and Mario Kart in there. Donkey Kong and Don- stuff like that. Well, Don- well, was Donkey Kong the last one? No, they, no. They, no. But he, they, they did actually get some, yeah, Bowser, Bowser was in the Bowser last one. Was Bowser in, was yeah, in, yeah. So they managed to get so, Donkey Kong for Pixels. Yeah. yeah. Um, so potentially they might be able to work out a deal, you know, with Pac-Man yeah. and all these other things. Yeah, so, around, we'll, so. We'll, have to see, we'll have to see what they do next and stuff. I mean, like... Hopefully they won't rush the story and stuff, but I think it's a good hands in the human department, mm-hmm. most definitely. What do you think, Leah? I, I'm a huge gamer. For, mm-hmm. for people that know me, I'm a massive gamer. Um, I'm really into my retro games. So when I first saw the first one, um, I, I, fu- I, you know, I fucking loved it. I thought the um, just the little nods, even with the like, like Zangief and yeah, Bison, yeah, like yeah. the whole yeah. bad guy talking together kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you know, just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad, bad guy. guy. <laughs> and I, you know, I love that. Um, and and I mean, if you think about I me, mean, Wreck It Ralph is. He is essentially Donkey Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because if you look at the uh, original Donkey Kong, um, yeah. Donkey Kong game, you know, that's pretty much it. But he, you know, he's wrecking everything. But you know, I'm, I'm totally down for it. I love my, I love my retro games. I love the first one and, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. No, I think, I think it'll be great. Um, it got a really good cast together, uh, mm. last time. So, you know, I can imagine upping it again. I, I'd imagine most of the characters are going to just come, um, come, yeah, back, come back. Uh, the princess and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, I wonder if there may be potential to go into some of the online games, so whether they're going to do this 
um, sort of like Minecraft or Farmville, maybe mm. those mo- like Clash of Titans, maybe those mobile games and potentially might be coming into it as well. I so. mean, you mentioned Tron, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you see the um, if you see the first one, even like the whole Halo kind of ripoff yes. thing going, on, Halo, me- you know, Medal of Honor, yeah. Cold Call of Duty thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, even that had a very like Tron feel to it, yeah, you're you know. Right. Yeah. When they were when they were going in to fight all the bugs yeah. and stuff, maybe, and looked, maybe we'll see Ralph in yeah. like a speed bike or something like that. Well, so. can he fit in a speed bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking lube himself up, up. Just yeah. get his arms out the, out the sides and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's going to be um, March um, 2018. So cool. we're really going to look forward to that. Yeah. Um, so moving on to our next topic, um, we've got um, the Blade Runner sequel update. So there's new casting news on this. Um, Captain Phillips uh, breakout star Barkhad Abdi uh, joins it. Um, so he's he's kept himself busy since then. He's been in um, Eye in the Sky and The Brothers Grimsby. Um, but now, you know, this Blade Runner sequel, um, you know, it's it's kind of been a slow burner. Hasn't been a huge amount of stuff coming out about it. Um, Dennis uh, Villeneuve, uh, who directed Sicario and Prisoners, he's directing it. And obviously Harrison Ford is back. Uh, he's got Ryan Gosling, Dave Bautista and Robin Wright. Um, and it's due for October 6, 2017. So, yeah. um, um, now I've, you know what? I've never seen Blade Runner. Yeah. Okay. It's one of those films I've never got around to you seeing. You just, you just need and to. We've run the podcast. No, 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 no. And exactly. we've, had and we've had this right, discussion right. and I need to look We're just going to get a new host. Star. So, so, so yeah. as of next week, we're going to have a new host. Oh. He'll have seen Blade Runner and it won't be this guy. So tell me what you want for the Blade Runner sequel. I don't. I don't, look, here's leave, it leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. No, honestly, like, like, I'm intrigued to what they do, but you got to understand, Blade Runner is a precious movie to me. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like, I just don't feel that it deserves or need a sequel. They said everything they needed to. Yeah. Um, they leave the audience. Well, it depends which version of the movie yeah, you've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. But which is your preferred you, version? Um, to Bro- be quite honest, I actually really like the last one, the final cut, because the, mm-hmm. there's five different versions of the movie. I'm okay. not going to go into the whole history about Blade Runner. Look it up, because we're here to talk about the sequel. Um, but yeah, just look it up. But I got the ultimate edition with all five versions of the cut of the film. I like the final version of the film, mm-hmm. and um, because that's how Scott intended it to yeah, be. Yeah, and... Yeah. Um, I really liked how they, you know, they did up the graphics a little bit, Mm -hmm. Star Wars style, yet retained the look of the original a lot Mm -hmm. better. It seemed more seamless and stuff. And, um, you know, that film still holds up even today. And the thing about Blade Runner, it's got one of those endings, like, is it this or is it that? And I personally feel if you remake, if or if sorry, not remake, if you do a sequel, you kind of take, it's like doing a sequel to Inception. Mm. Yeah. A direct okay. sequel to Inception. You lose that ending. You yeah. know what I mean? And you can make the first one far less superior than what it should be. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm afraid of. I know Harrison Ford's in it. I don't know how big a role he's in it. Yeah, if, he is, yeah. if he is in it, I'd much rather them never answer that question. Okay. Okay, without spoiling the movie for Keenan here. Sorry, Kenan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to watch it this week. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. watch it this week. But um, it's like, um, do you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, you know, if, if they manage to do it that way, mm-hmm. so that if you've not seen the original, seen it, you go yeah. watch it. So potentially, uh, maybe the Ryan Gosling character could is be more the, of the well, lead. Well, that's the, that's Harrison the rumors. That's the rumors. Back to the official news about um, this guy, Clark 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 Abdi. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, good fit. I totally, mm-hmm. I totally see mm-hmm. why they would cast yeah. him for that mm-hmm. universe. He totally looks like he could be a replicant because the whole point is. It's kind of like the Terminator thing where mm-hmm. uh, the original concept of the Terminator mm-hmm. that James yeah. Cameron had, that it could be anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know... He's a fucking... He's an amazing actor. Yeah, he's really. fantastic. Yeah. I, one of the main things I loved about him is how humble he stayed after Captain Phillips. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He, went, he went and did, like, this major fucking movie mm-hmm. with one of the biggest actors on the planet. Yeah. And then he went back to work and he went to toe to toe with him. The, I mean, that that line is one of the most quotable lines now. Yeah, yeah, like, I yeah. I am the captain now. You know, yeah. it's just like... But he went, he went straight back to work at his, like, family shop mm-hmm. right afterwards mm-hmm. and was kind of like, no, I'm going back to my normal yeah, life. Yeah. And then yeah. people hit him up and was like, hey, dude, like, do you want to do this movie? He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, but I'm happy. Like, just mm-hmm. fucking sweep in the floor or do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I think he's a great actor. I think Captain Phillips is a badass movie mm-hmm. and definitely because of him. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, and I'm totally down to see him, to see him do some more work. And what, what was really good about Captain Phillips, I felt, was that 
he held his own against yeah, Tom yeah, Hanks for sure. really well mm-hmm. at that level. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, so I think fantastic casting. So I will watch the movie this week and then we can chat about it Please, please do. So, Let uh, me know. I'll watch so we want the, what, the last version, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring it around. All right, wicked. Uh, right, so moving on to the next uh, topic. Um, Daniel Craig joins former Bond girl Halle Berry in Kings. So um, it's not official yet, but Daniel Craig is close to signing um, up uh, to starring Kings. It's an independent drama set against the backdrop of the 1992 Los Angeles riots. Um, if the deal goes through, Craig will play a loner living in South Central Los Angeles during 1992 LA riots, in love with Berry's character, and the encroaching violence motivates him to try and protect her and her children. Um, the riot side a few hours after a jury in uh, suburban um, Simi Valley acquitted four Los Angeles police officers of the use of excessive force in the videotaped arrest and beating of Rodney King. Um, it's all over YouTube and just have a look at that to see like what the original um, um, situation was. Um, and this is following a high speed chase. Um, a total of 55 people died during the riots and amid looting, assault and arson causing more than one billion in property damage. Um, so Kings will mark the English language debut of uh, Turkish director Denis Gamez Güven, whose drama Mustang was nominated for an Academy Award this year. So decent cast. Mm. We haven't seen Halle Berry much in terms of films lately, but she did have the um, Amazon um, show, yep. um, which I didn't see myself. But mm-hmm. um, interesting casting. And I, I quite like the concept of what is going to be yeah. the backdrop of the film. I mean, for me, I um, I love uh, anything to do with... Uh, I'm, obviously, I love America. Mm-hmm. I love you guys. Oh, give me a reason. We love you guys. Give me a green card. I'll come out. Um, but I, I love everything to do with America, spe- spe- specifically uh, like LA, California. So when I watch anything to do with, um, you know, anything to do with gang-related blood in, blood out, or American mm-hmm. Me, um, even, uh, you know, Southland... Uh, mm-hmm. as in the TV show yeah. or the movie that came out which was uh, End of Watch anything like that anything gritty LA stuff I fucking love mm-hmm. um, this is totally going to be something I'm interested in uh, you know I love uh, I love the whole I mean if you don't know anything about the LA rights I mean fucking look into it it's, it's crazy we had our own one here yeah. kind of thing like you mm-hmm. know when we had the rights in the UK and stuff and it was very reminiscent mm-hmm. of the LA riots kind of thing and, and, uh, and but nothing it, compared to the violence. nothing compared but I mean I think the closest thing they got to that afterwards which was maybe the Baltimore thing. Yes. Because the Baltimore riots after mm-hmm. that kid got shot. So um, it, it's, it was deep shit. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the, like the skid marks on uh, Los Angeles history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for them to like touch on that, I don't think I've seen a film with regard to that subject. So it's going to be good yeah, to see nothing, something nothing like touching on that. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, I mean, I've seen stuff with regards to like the, the Hispanic gangs being like pulled out and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or Hispanic people in LA, um, and they touch on that in American Me, which yeah. is uh, Edward uh, Edward James Olmos, I think mm-hmm. it is. Um, so that you know, that's a fantastic movie. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally looking yeah. forward. And I, you know, Daniel Craig, mm-hmm. I got a jaded history yeah, with that actor, yeah. but I love me some Halle Berry, man. So I'm down for it. Let's see what let's see what Daniel Craig can do. Let's see, is he going to be rocking a, mm-hmm. an American? I think actor? the vibe that it might have for me is sort of like the you know we watch No Escape. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's going to have that vibe. You know, you've got this situation going on in the background. It's these people trying to get through yeah, it. Yeah, so it's exactly, safe, yeah. kind of thing. So, Sasha, your thoughts on it? Um, should be interesting. Should be interesting. So, to be noted, this is, well, this is, this film's been directed by Denise and Graven. Mm-hmm. She's a Turkish director. Mm-hmm. This is her second film, but this was actually her first script. Mm-hmm. This is, this is a passion project for her. She's been trying to get this movie made since 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she did a movie last year called, uh, Mustang, yeah. which she was advised to do something like, you know, something a little bit less ambitious and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, just to go, look, make a movie first you know, with, like, people you know or, like, you know, what you can get and then probably do something more ambitious. She's trying to obviously cast the best people to make it a bit more marketable and stuff. Yeah. Um, again, this, you know, this is, like, one of her first scripts that she's very passionate about. So it just seems like she's taking all the time and attention that she needs to do to get this project made. Yeah. I think, you know, the subject matter is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, of, like, I think it's a really good subject matter to look at now in light of like how the world is now yeah if you know what i mean so um yeah totally down for this daniel craig um fantastic actor i don't care what people say about him as james bond Mm -hmm. okay but in everything else that he's been in he's managed to bring it to that level which is why he got cast as bond in the first Mm -hmm. place um you know my 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 stance on him as bond is quite 
you know, he's different. Yeah. But it's supposed to be a different yeah. take. And we haven't seen him do much else other than Bond since he's taken on the role. No, right? so, he's been in quite so, a lot of films since he's been in Bond, if anything. He's always done a lot more independent films or a lot more. Yeah, but I'm talking know, about sort of like that, him as like the marquee name on a particular film. So that's not I haven't, I haven't, I mean, tell, tell me which film, but I can't remember seeing him headlining a film. Defiance. Just, there was Defiance. There was that one where, oh God. I'm, pi- I'm picturing the posters, but not the actual films. But right. <laughs> there's a whole slew of films that he's done. Maybe not since he's done, not Skyfall, Spectre. But, you know, there was the Dragon Tattoo one, uh, the Dragon Tattoo remake. Mm-hmm. Um, Powercraft. What's it? Um, Tomb Raider. <clears throat> yeah, no, that? I mean, a lot, you know. What was that, that dreadful was like... polar bear film? Oh, um, there we go. Oh, Golden uh, Compass. Golden Compass. Golden there, Compass. Was Gold, there was the Golden Compass. Um yeah, but anyway, I, I I disagree on that note that he hasn't been. I don't I don't think he's been in anything that's made like a billion dollar movie. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Because he always goes for the lower key kind of, you know, mm-hmm. the low budget kind of movies yeah, I mean, and stuff. Yeah, no, so, yeah. Fair, he's done Cowboys and Aliens. Um, as well. That was a wicked movie. Yeah, Dra- Girl with Dragon right. Tattoo. They were both out in two thousand eleven, yeah. and then yeah, he did Skyfall. Um, but then yeah, nothing between Skyfall and Spectre. So okay. since two thousand twelve. He hasn't done anything else oh, okay. but other than Bond, really. So, um, oh, well, he was in Star Wars. So, got to give him that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uncredited. Yeah, Uncredited yeah. in Star Wars. Uh, right. So, yeah, um, I think, yeah, like you say, great subject matter, um, strong director. It'd be great to see what, um, what they can bring to it. Hmm. Um, so, moving on, um, the next one is um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the reboot. Um, mm. So... This is the pencil and paper dice rolling game, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it's been a global franchise now for over 40 years. It's led to novels, video games, um, the Saturday morning cartoon series, which is what I know Dungeons and Dragons to be. And that was on between 83 and 85. Um, it did have a film adaptation in the 2000s with Dungeons and Dragons. Two of them. Um, there was another one. There was and a it, there was, there was actually two sequels, um, which Whoa, were straight three? to DVD. Yeah. yeah. Wrath of um, the Gods was one of them. Right. right. Yeah. So Dungeons and Dragons, I think the original one had Jeremy Irons. That's right. I remember yeah. I was working at the cinema at this time. I remember that. Well, I, remember I remember watching the it. The fact that our friend Richard, who isn't here today, who was in previous episodes, um, he loved that movie. Really? Um, yeah, he did. No, uh, wasn't it Chris? Uh, I think Chris loved it as well. Yeah, Chris okay. will be on some future episodes. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so however, Warner Brothers has been developing uh, a reboot for some time now. There was lots of issues regarding the rights uh, to the um, to the movies, which mm-hmm. was obviously resolved a few years back now. Um, but they've got the uh, new dire- the director Rob Letterman on, um, who recently done uh, Goosebumps. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the other thing that's most recent is Ansel Eggort is now potentially going to be taking a starring role in the movie. Um, he's best known for starring in The Fault in Our Stars. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He was also recently up in the running to be the new Han Solo yeah, yeah. Um, spin-off film, mm-hmm. um, which... Um, He'd have been good. Yeah. yeah. So it's, un- it's unclear what game elements are going to be coming from the games or whether you're a D&D fan. And there's also rumours that Vin Diesel is supposed to be in this as well yeah. because he's a, he's a, he's a He used to be a dungeon master. Right, yeah. okay. So I was going to drop that as yeah, a little fact so there, the, screen, it, yeah. the screenplays um, by uh, David Leslie Johnson, who's done The Conjuring 2, yeah. which has done really well recently. Um, Scared the so, fuck yeah. out of me. So, the, <laughs> so if it means anything to anyone, apparently it's going to be set um, in the Forgotten Realms campaign. Here's some of the rumours. So... Do we want to see this movie? Is it the right time, considering you know how popular stuff like games, uh, Game of Thrones and stuff is, World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, yeah. um, and also the fact that you know it's popular in TV culture like Big Bang, and mm. so people are aware of this kind of franchise. I never, even I'm, if they've never played, the I've game. never played the game. Like for me, um, people tell me good things. I don't know about Satra, but I've never played it, mm. um, so I don't know how well it will transition from like from game to screen. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing the original one mm-hmm. along oh, the movie like a while ago, like a yeah. long, when it first came out. And I don't remember it leaving a good taste in my mouth afterwards. But that beer may have been the stale popcorn at Harrow <laughs> Cinema. But anyway, um, I wasn't, uh, I, you know, I've never been a huge fan of it. But what I do see and what I do love, is, and it makes me want to play it, when I hear people like Vin Diesel mm-hmm. are attached to it in some sort of way mm-hmm. as a franchise, whether it be a board game or yeah. movie or whatever. But also when I watch things like The Big Bang or when I watch mm-hmm. Community, when they yes. did an episode with that yes. as well. And it, makes me want to play it because it looks so fun, right? Because right, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, that's going to be a really good. Mm-hmm. So if they kind of like, they manage to transition the 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 element of when you watch it and people are playing it and as happy as it is, as, as fun as it looks to mm-hmm. play it, they manage to transition that element 
on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, along with, I mean, again, you don't know what in what format it's going to be. Are no, they going to get yeah. sucked into the world, or while they're mm-hmm. playing it, some stupid like magic? Yeah, that's kind of what happened in the cartoon, right? Yeah. So you had all these kids like um, who got sucked into this dun- dungeon world. They had to take up these special weapons and then yeah, sort yeah. of like fight their way through to get to an end point. A la, I, so. I, I think I would say that's a la last action hero style with the uh, golden ticket. <laughs> yeah. Very right, much yeah. like that. So is that, is it going to go down? Where is it going to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it going to go down like that? And if it is, you know, are they still going to transfer that element? Um, I will definitely watch it. Um, you know, especially if you got De- like David Leslie Johnson writing because The Conjuring 2 is a fucking fantastic movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, I'm down for it, man. James Wan did a really good job there. There, um, with what he was given so um, you know if David manages to pull it out again I'm, I'm down for it I'll definitely check it out because yeah. you know what's what's the worst thing it can't be as bad as the other one so well never know yeah, you hope so but you hope <laughs> what so what was the film Vin Diesel was in recently uh, The Witch Hunter or something like that is that Bond? good no. I never no, watched no, it no. but he's doing Triple X 2 he is although Triple X 3 Triple X 3 yeah yeah Triple X because Triple X so Sasha uh, D&D <laughs> Couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. Okay. This reeks of studios trying to come up with what's the next big thing. Mm -hmm. It bloody sinks off. We've got an IP. Let's use it. Look, The Hobbit's over and done with. Mm -hmm. So there's a market for fantasy films right now. And, you know, they were, they've been talking about this for years, but it's all about timing and when to release. Mm -hmm. So this is their chance to go and do it. Um, you know, they got the director of fucking Goosebumps, for Christ's sake. That's a dog shit movie. That's not even that great. The only good thing this director ever did was Shark Tale. And that's a piece of shit as well. <laughs> whoa, um, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. All I'm saying is, no, no, no. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. I agree. And, oh, and on top, to on top that off, to top, to top that off. No, I've got to finish it. I've got to finish this. You know, it's, it's, it's just bad <laughs> things put right. together. <laughs> Look. They want to take this franchise seriously rather than just mm-hmm. churning it out. Otherwise, it'll be the same piece of shit the of what it was, was yeah. 10 years ago. You know what? Vin Diesel is a passionate D&D fa- fan. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't need more marketing than that. Yeah. You don't need no, pa- no more He's got the highest that. followers on Facebook. Exactly. Like 76 exactly. million or something Here's like that. Here's the thing, okay? If you told me that Vin Diesel is in the Dungeons and Dragons movie, ticket bought, mm-hmm. done. You know what I mean? Just because I'm intrigued to see what the fuck's going on there. Yeah. Now, unless he ends up just being a voice of a character, yeah. Already or but something but like that, you know what? But you know what? You need someone with passion. Oh, you yeah, know what I mean? You do. And he's a producer now. So mm-hmm. if you told me that Vin Diesel was producing it and trying to get Star the best people yeah. for yeah. for the IP, I'd be down for that because he he's passionate about the games mm-hmm. for it not to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And. There's no one there, and their CV says otherwise, that they don't give a shit. So, sorry guys, you ain't got my money, and I'm not really a fan of the board game either. Right. Just just wasn't my thing. Well, um, um, we'll see. I mean, yeah. I think that's going to be a long time coming. I think Sasha's view is yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah, dead. Uh, okay, so next up, uh, Vinnie Jones is to play a dapper Brit in the mm. uh, spy sequel Kingsman the Golden Circle. So this is a sequel to the hit spy uh, comics adaptation Kingsman Secret Service by director Matthew Vaughan. Um, it's got quite a cast already, so it's returning cast of Colin Firth, um, Taron Egerton, Mark Strong, Edward um, Holcroft. Um, Colin Firth casting is a little bit of a spoiler. Um, and um, it's also got Julianne Moore this time around, Channing Tatum, Jeff Bridges, Halle Berry, Pe- um, Pedro Pascal, and even Elton John. So Vinnie Jones has come into it. Matthew Vaughan knows him very well from Lock Stock Days um, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, very much more of a cameo appearance. Um, he's put some images up on, I think, uh, Twitter and Instagram. He's in a suit. He's got Union Jacks on the tip of his shoes kind of thing. So he's going to be very much that character. Um, I'm really looking forward to this film. Mm. I love the first Kingsman. I've seen it several times mm-hmm. with different people. And each person I've introduced it to has loved it as well. Yeah. Um, so it seems to be getting a great cast, this new edition of the film. What do you guys think? I think Vinnie Jones is an awesome choice. I mean, like, fair enough. He does play the one note, yeah. you know what I mean, which can be a bit tiresome sometimes. But if you go back to Snatch and Lockstock mm-hmm. with Matthew Vaughan mm-hmm. and uh, Guy Ritchie, because um, Vaughan produced both of them, yeah. um, you know, they, they're old school friends. They have that relationship. And if you were to ask me what was Vinnie Jones' best in his you know, filmography, mm-hmm. it's those two films stand out amongst yeah. everything else. You don't even mention, like, Gone in 60 Seconds, Gone in 60 seconds <laughs> or anything. You know what I mean? You bring up that. I think he'd make a good 
Because since it's like the whole James, old school James Bond kind of vibe, he'd make a good henchman. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like a good old school kind of Bond henchman. Jaws. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I'm actually surprised he's never actually, the, the Bond people have never actually thought about that. And I'm kind of glad that Matthew Vaughan decided this is my Bond kind of thing. Yeah. And um, he's rolling with it. Um, this cast just keeps getting better and better. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen Kingsman, Kingsman, you haven't lived because it's that damn good. It's the church awesome. scene is worth the price of ambition oh, alone. Amazing. Done. I'm sold. Leo, what do you think? I'm sold on the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm on the same. Yeah. I'm on the same trip as you guys. I'm totally down with uh, Kingsman sequel. I love me some Kingsman. Um, he is right. Absolutely, that scene with the church is. Um, you know, if you if you have seen it, then you understand how fantastic Free Bird is by Leonard Skinner, yeah. and you know how well that goes really. You know, well with that scene. But um, man, I'm just. I, you know what? I don't like Vinnie Jones. I, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, yeah, 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 exactly. Fair enough. Uh, no, I don't like Vinnie Jones, man. I just, uh, I, I, I'm totally with you on the snatch and lock stock thing, but he's just made, he is one note. He is a very one note character. Um, if he is in it, I will, I will call Cesar Palace to watch this movie. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know, for me personally, I'm just not. But that one casting not make you want to go and see this movie. Do you know what? It, it, there have been, well, it depends how big of a role he has. Yeah. So if he's like, henchman number two yeah. uh, kind of like he was in Swordfish mm-hmm. where he's kind of like a very small character mm-hmm. and he's yeah. nodding because he understands he's like oh yeah I remember yeah. we he have puts, D- we have D-Land back yeah. in the background today <laughs> he, puts, he puts a gun uh, he puts a gun to uh, Hugh Jackman's head while he's getting a blowjob and he has to yeah, hack yeah, the computer yeah. um, you know and I thought okay if he plays that kind of role and I don't really see him great I'm, I'm down <laughs> with that but I really I just don't like him and I, I think he's I think he's a one note character he's a really he's not a great actor mm-hmm. And if you've seen Euro Trip, that's the taste that gets left in my mouth right. every time I think of it. I think he's either going to go two ways. So he's either going to play someone potentially in a flashback or get kills off, gets killed off very quickly. Um, like Wanted. Um, like well, the even, in, even, in the, in the, even in the first film, the main spy character at the beginning, I've forgotten the, uh, the actor's name, but he gets killed off like right at the beginning mm. when he's trying to save uh, Mark Hamill's character. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so he's either going to have something like that because what tells me potentially about his role is he's going to have direct contact with Julianne Moore because he's been in pictures with her on set yeah. um, taking selfies. So he's either going to be one of her henchmen because she's mm. going to be the villain or he's going to be in the scene very much like he gets killed off very quick. So, um, yeah, so Kingsman, Gold Circle, going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that was the main thing for the first one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so next up, uh, Pacific Rim 2. So we've spoken about this recently. Um, we announced, obviously, John Boyega was being cast in episode uh, two uh, of our podcast. So the new addition to that is Scott Eastwood. Um, he is now um, joined on. Um, he's currently filming Fast 8 and will be seen later this year in Suicide Squad. Um, it's also been given an official release date now as well. So February 23rd, 2018 um, is going to be Pacific Rim 2. Um, it's going to sit between two other Marvel movies, which is going to be Black Panther on February 16th and Untitled Fox Marvel pick on March 2nd most likely going to be Deadpool 2. Um, so it's going to sit right between the toes, those two. So it's going to, it's going up with some big hitters, um, but we've already spoken, I think we're all really looking forward to this. It doesn't but matter. This casting? It, it does, does, it does, mate, are you fucking kidding me right now? You got, you, you're getting Eastwood in this bitch. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. You just got, you've uh, like, you've got a pedigree right there and Pacific Rim 2, like, just take all of my money. Take all of it. I don't care. I'm I'm completely down with that Shut fucking up movie. And take my money. That's it. I'm completely down with that movie. Any casting, like you know, you got John Boyega in there. Mm-hmm. I don't need but to I- say. <laughs> oh, I, I'll give you one of them too. Yeah. Give you three. John Boyega in there. You you get Scott Eastwood in. Like I just I I'm down. I, mm. I don't even need to hear anything else. Like yeah. for me, that movie's coming out. Happy days. Mm-hmm. I'm in. You get my money. I recommend everybody watch the first one and then what, go watch the second one. Mm-hmm. Even if you didn't like the first one because you'll love the second one. Mm-hmm. I already love it. I haven't fucking seen I've, it yet. I've also heard that um, actually Boyega might be assisting on producing on this as well because he set really? up his own, oh. he's set up his own small uh, company um, and uh, yeah, he might be assisting in that. So obviously Del Toro and stuff is going to be executive producers but apparently he might be assisting in the producing as well which makes it really, really interesting. Just look at the, look, just look at the melting pot you got in there. You just yeah. got so much talent being thrown in um, you just can't, you, you yeah. can't deny that this film is not, and if you're going up against some heavy hitters, Dead, Deadpool 2, I guarantee this will stand up there. Like, Deadpool 2 will take number one slot. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed, right? Mm-hmm. But you will have, you, you will have Black Panther, maybe three, maybe mm-hmm. four, because the characters well, are I mean, very they're, well they're known. coming out sort of like one week after the other. So, yeah. you know, 
I, I think Pacific Rim 2 will struggle to go, a str- will struggle to get a number one spot yeah. with Black yeah. Panther out because yeah. that will continue over a couple of you weeks. You gotta understand, yeah. you gotta understand though, Black Panther has been introduced into the Marvel realm now. Yes. Okay. Yes. And very prominently too. Yes. And Such the thing is, it's now yeah. all of a sudden, a billion dollar movie. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. No, 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 I, no, no, I, no, no, yeah. no, no. Before you say, ah, oh, give the look. No. I'm giving Cap- look, look. At, look at look at Captain America. No one gave a flying fuck about Captain America. Mm-hmm. Okay. No one did. Okay. Mm-hmm. They watched that movie that took in like three, four million tops. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You threw him in there with the Avengers, the rest yeah. of the boys. Okay. Billion dollar picture. Every scene same with same with Thor. Mm-hmm. Thor and Cap didn't make that much. You know, bank mm-hmm. when they came out from the Avengers. Now they're all bank. bank yeah. Spider Man's a billion dollar. Well, that was always a billion dollar property. Like you know, yeah, but you're reversing it. You're reversing it now. Utilized yeah. pro- properly. But you're reversing but, it now. So what you're saying yeah. is, is like they had their standalone movie. It didn't go very well. They joined the the larger universe. Yeah. Then they made lo- loads of money. But then. Are you? Is that? Is that then you're it's, saying that because they joined the once, large universe, once, they once, once, the audience, once the casual audience, once the casual audience identify them yeah. as part of the bigger team, mm-hmm. it's just yeah. maybe it's know, me. I don't know enough just, about Black just, Panther to turn around and say what his carrying power. The other is. thing. Yeah. The other thing so, is. The other thing is Black Panther. I guarantee you, if you know, it's Marvel doing it themselves. If you know anything about Pan- about Black Panther, it's gonna be. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that now. It is not going to be rubbish. Totally mm-hmm. It's going to be fantastic. And out of those three, now I loved Pacific Rim too. Okay. I, Rim. I, I said like, oh, yeah, as yeah, well. As well. Also. Yeah. Also, I, I loved it. I, I did, I did love it. Um, but it flopped at the box office. They've mm-hmm. had real struggle trying to do a number two. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, that's not to say that this isn't a good movie. This, mm-hmm. this, I, I like the first one. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for this movie. Uh, but, what we're supposed to be talking about, going back on point and staying on target, is the acting talent. And Scott Eastwood is a great addition to that. I don't know how well the movie will, with the other heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, we'll see. But fantastic casting in Scott Eastwood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I've been saying this for years, for at least the past 10 years, yeah, yeah. that like, this guy, this is the guy. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, ever since Flags of Far Fathers, I've been like, whoa, that's his son? Yeah, and not only it. that, look at him. That is the man with no name right there. He look, he's a clone. He is a clone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is potentially the next Wolverine after Jackman. I, you know? I like that's that. What I, that that's, my mm-hmm. honest, that's my honest opinion because Wolverine as a character was based on his dad. Yeah. He, he looks no, and sounds I, like I, his dad. I totally agree. And, uh, Just, yeah, yeah, I mean, a fantastic actor. And I think what's going to help Pacific Rim 2 is the fact that you know he's in. He's gonna be in Fast Eight, Suicide Squad. Yeah. Potentially, that's gonna do really well. At the end of the year, he's gonna bring and there. John Boyega. John Boyega's exactly. on fire right now. And, you know, um, you know, not far after that, then obviously you're gonna have Star Wars again. So it's yeah. gonna be really, you know. Um, you know, they might not seem the biggest names at the moment, but by the time this film comes out, yeah, they are going to be they are going to be the guys, yeah. to be quite honest, and that's kind of what they're going for for this, for to even stand a chance against. Yeah, absolutely, you know, what, totally agree. Yeah, um, and I think the key is the worldwide box office on this. You know, exactly, it's going to be China and Asia and the UK. Europe, um, but again, it didn't do that well in the US box office. So, right, so moving on to the next topic, um, we've got Minecraft the movie. Um, so Warner Brothers revealed in their uh, revealed that their big Memorial Day 2019 release will be the video game adaptation of Minecraft. Um, it's been known for a while that Warner Brothers has been developing an adaptation of the world building game. It was first launched in 2011. Um, but this rele- release date obviously confirms it's going to be within the next few years. Um, it's going to will mark the feature directorial debut of Robert uh, McElhenney, um, co-star and creator of TV's It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. So it's um, if Minecraft is a box office success, obviously you can it'll give them leg room for a potential franchise for this type of thing. I've never played the game. Is it something that can be turned into a movie? What do you guys think? They'll about? they'll find a way. I mean, they'll, they'll, they they you know, they find a way to make the Lego Movie, mm-hmm. which is what this essentially is. That's what so, they're going to do in that same kind of style. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Um, obviously, the premise in Lego, they had to sort of create a premise. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of already has a premise if you haven't played it. Um, you know, basically, uh, for, from my basic understanding when I played it a long time ago, you're building fortresses to protect against zombies coming and you have a character who's got a sword. And, you know, again, I'm sure there's deeper and people who are into it. I apologize for destroying the storyline of it. <laughs> I, I played it very briefly and I was um, rather influenced with some marijuana. Um Stoned, I was stoned. Uh, I'm just going to say it's an open mic class. Come arrest me, it's fine. Um, so basically, yeah, I mean, 
that's not the premise I get, but it is like Lego for adults. So you, you can pretty much build anything in this world. Mm -hmm. So when I see it, I think the Lego movie, mm -hmm. um, will they find a premise? Definitely for sure. Um, you know, if you watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the, the I don't know if you guys have you guys seen this show. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So I think I got you into it, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, the comedy in that is fantastic. And I definitely think that's why uh, Lego was great because it had really good, it was very self-aware, good yeah, comedy yeah, in it. And I think they'll bring that into Minecraft. Um, you know, I don't know. Is it is it going to be adult theme? Because there might be a lot of undertones in there, adult wise. Because it's yeah. always sunny. I mean, that kind of humor is it's pretty fucked up. Mm -hmm. So you know, are they going to bring that into Minecraft and have it like very much Shrek like, where you have jokes for adults yeah. and then jokes for children, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit for everybody. So well, it's you know, it's definitely down to see where we go with it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll check it out. I'm not gonna. I'm not overly enthused about it mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, uh, you know, we just have to see what kind of what kind of comes out. Let's see a little bit, look at a trailer and yeah. uh, and get my interest sparked from there. Sasha, ever played the game? Any interest? I played the game. I, I think it's a great game. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I didn't play it that like Leo. I didn't really play it that in depth. But mm -hmm. it was like one of those things where I thought, well, whoa, this is like digital crack. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put it away because if I get sucked in, I'm gonna go build shit. Yeah, all day, <laughs> all week, whatever. But um. I don't care. It's like yeah. another. It's another retaliation move by Warner Brothers. These mm -hmm. old people up there need to need to sort out. Their, they can't even make a decent comic book movie these days. You yeah, know, look they're at just that. Just trying to cling on to franchises. They're just, they're, it's just IP and franchises. They hit well with the Lego Movie, but that's because they had great writers with um, Lord and Miller. Mm -hmm. Okay, who are super hot right now, mm -hmm. like across Hollywood. Um, Philadelphia. I'm not a fan of the show. Mm -hmm. I think the comedy is stale mm -hmm. um i don't know where they could go with it maybe maybe the dude's got an interesting take on it yeah, yeah. coming from a comedy background maybe i mean like you know what check out corridor digital those guys they do a lot yes. of minecraft short films okay so these guys have been creating ideas based on video game yeah. ideas and stuff if you said those two guys were directing directed this movie yeah. i'd be like yeah i'm in yeah. because i've seen what they've done that's right yeah you introduced it stuff. to me this week and yeah some fantastic check videos. them out sam and nico corridor digital youtube yeah. them check all their videos and trust, the me, link below. trust me if you said they were directed a video game adaptation of mm -hmm. anything i'm like there so, so i mean it'd be interesting yeah. whether they go for the um, real life and minecraft mixed mm. so whether they have minecraft movie into the, the sort of like the, the real world yeah or whether it's just purely gonna be a minecraft, minecraft they kind of did that again with lego movie, yeah right? so they had so. like the guy you know the young boy playing with the lego mm -hmm. and moving in and out so it'd be interesting if they do that um but yeah like i said i've never played the game um but i'm sure you know it's it's so so popular it will drive people it's a wait and see kind of thing it's a wait and see very early days but that kind of leads us on to our next topic which is like the lego um franchise mm -hmm. um so one of the ever since lego movie um was one of the big box offices of 2014 warner bros have been developing a new set of lego related movies so uh, we've got the lego batman movie which is in february 2017 we've got the lego movie sequel august 2019 and the Billion Brick Race, um, which is scheduled for either 19 or 20. So the fourth movie this run is going to be the adaptation of the Lego toy line um, Nin Ninja Go. Um, Ninjago. Well, Ninjago, is it? Yeah, right, Ninjago. Ninjago. Trust me. Uh, Masters of Spinjitsu, <laughs> um, which com combines Lego um, with Japanese mythology, basically, mm -hmm. and ninjas. Um, Very... Very loosely based. Right, okay. So <laughs> we learned um, via the 2016 licensing expo um, that uh, Jackie Chan is going to lend his voice um, to this um, as a lead voice. Um, he will also be joined by the uh, voices of uh, Fred Armisen, uh, who's in TV's uh, Port uh, Portlandia. Portlandia. Uh, Portlandia. There we go. I've never seen it. Uh, Dave Good. Franco from 21 Jump Street. Um, Abby Jackson from TV's Broad City. And uh, Michael, uh, Michael Pena, Pena uh, from Ant-Man. So... You know, it's also got Sil Silicon Valley co-stars, uh, Kamali Nanjinia and Zach Woods. So, again, some really good talent there. Um, I quite like the idea of this. Um, it's going to be uh, directed um, by Charlie Bean, who did Tron Uprising mm -hmm. and Robot Boy. So, I'm quite, Tron intrigued, Rising, right? yeah. I'm quite Tron, intrigued Tron by Tron Uprising this. is um, pretty good. Yeah. Different take on the Lego franchise. Mm. I love the Lego movie. The trailer for Lego Batman looks fantastic. What are you thinking about? This, you know, this is a TV show, right? Yeah, it's currently yeah, a TV so show. It's a TV moment, show. Right, you can yeah. see it on Netflix. Uh, you can watch it on, I think, Cartoon it's Network. It's on Cartoon Network or something, yeah. Um, so, I mean, um, you know, as somebody who spends a lot of time, like, you know, around, like, my son and mm -hmm. stuff like that, because um, he's my son, 
<laughs> um, obviously, it works out that way. <laughs> we, uh, we, you know, we, we we put on a lot of cartoons and stuff for him, and uh, and for sure, this is definitely something he watches. Um, you know, he doesn't; he's not old enough to understand it. But mm-hmm. I like to; I want to get him into Lego. I want to get him yeah. to get the idea Those of visuals. It. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, evidently, it seems that I end up watching a lot of them mm-hmm. too. Um, it is actually quite funny. It's very mm-hmm. self-aware. Um, you know. W- it's not for his age demographic because he's, you know, two and a half, but mm-hmm. um, it's definitely to hit that demographic, maybe from uh, five-year-olds mm-hmm. to like maybe 12-year-olds mm-hmm. if you're into mm-hmm. that sort of action. The games, the the, the, the the Lego pieces themselves are fucking expensive, man. And like, you know, they are, they, they, they definitely go out there and the kids buy them, they get them for Christmas. You know, I know I've seen it. I've bought them for other people. Yeah. Will they make money? They will make bank on this. Mm-hmm. That's, it's, it is simply because it is an offer franchise that kids are playing with all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they see it on Cartoon Network mm-hmm. or, what, or, or Netflix that, you know, yeah. they're going to make the money back. Um, it's a great idea um, to make money. Personally, mm-hmm. me, I'm going to end up watching it mm-hmm. because I have a kid and, you know, and I'm going to take my son to go see it. But do I personally give a fuck? Not really. <laughs> you know, like, I personally couldn't give two shits about a Ninjago movie, but I definitely see the appeal. I can totally see where, uh, where you know, production company is saying, you know, this is where the money is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to catch those kids at summertime. You want to get them. You, there is, this is like crack to children and yeah. they will, they will. They and it's will, easy win for merchandising. Yeah, exactly. Kind of it's an easy win for merchandisers. Lego wins, production company wins. You know, it's low cost and they'll make major money back. Mm-hmm. What else, what else do you fucking want? For yeah. them, it's a cash cow. And, yeah. and like, kids are going to be like, mom, mom, can take me to go see Ninjago? I want to go see the Ninjago movie. Because it will be plastered on adverts, everywhere. you know, everywhere. Yeah. And these kids are going to see it. And, you know, it, it's a money maker. I personally don't give a fuck about it. Mm-hmm. But that, you know, that's my point. Of about, yeah. Yeah, but everything Leo said, said to be yeah. honest, it's like plus more of what I said about the Minecraft thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's made by guys that just want to just pimp out stuff because they made like a that's billion it. dollars. Of that's kind of the problem that, I have at the it. moment, anyway. I mean, that's everything just, just seems to be kind yeah. of like, oh, so you like like you know you want chess game? You like chess games? Well, here's a fucking chess, chess movie. movie. Yeah. You know, it's just like just just. Let's have some originality. Like, yeah. you know, I don't want, I don't give a fuck about Lego films. Kids do. I get why you make them. Fine. I, no I, problem, can, I can see him expanding on the Lego universe. Um, I can see potentially down the road, sort of like a Lego Simpsons movie yeah. or something like that. You know, they did it in one of the episodes and they did some crossover. I have the like Lego that. Simpsons. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I want to buy the Simpsons house, Quickie Mart and everything. But again, like you say, it's so expensive. Do you want to know? I can and tell you exactly. Like, I spent like last year at Christmas. I think I bought four pieces. I bought the Death Star, the Star Destroyer, mm-hmm. and the Simpsons House. The Simpsons mm-hmm. House regular RRP is uh, about just under five hundred pounds. It's, it's fucking yeah. expensive, and um, I have a lot of Lego card points now because. Right. Of that. Okay. But I actually ended up selling them just on a side point. I mm-hmm. sold them for more money built than I what I paid for. Right. Them. So just ready to go. If parents. Yeah, yeah. Parents were parents it. were killing for it, and on eBay, I sold that for like an extra two hundred pound profit. Wow. Crazy. So what I'm saying is, Lego, Lego are gonna <laughs> they make money, and even if they're built, they make money. This is gonna make money, but ultimately, we don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So moving on. Um. So this is something that I know you guys are gonna want to talk about because I haven't seen this movie. Um. It's the uh the Man from Nowhere remake. Um. So they this was a. Um, you know, tell me about it because I haven't seen this film. I'm not sure of the property. What's going on with it? Do you um, remember? Because I do. Yeah. Get, okay. So basically, yeah. it's a. Uh, it's it's basically about this like um he's like a badass special forces soldier mm-hmm. and he has like a really quiet uh life at the moment. Yeah. So he runs like a little pawn shop at the bottom of this um at the bottom of this like housing building structure i remember people live there anyway um and he uh he kind of builds this relationship with this like young little girl Mm -hmm. who's in the building because she's always like pawning her headphones for money and her mom is like a she's like a pro like with a drug dealer slash prostitute anyway chaos ensues Mm -hmm. they 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 sort of like fuck up the mom and they take the daughter or something like again i'm a bit hazy because i watched it but basically because he has this affiliation with this little girl he goes on a rampage to go save this little girl right, okay. and to get revenge on her behalf for killing her family and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But he's just kind of like very distant, very k poppy, very Korean yeah. kind of movie. Like, you know, you have to be into those kind of revenge. There's a lot of dialogue, but man, 
I yeah. think I think me and you will talk when the action kicks in. Yeah. Holy fuck! Oh, it yeah, is definitely. so fucking good. The end. The end scene. Just any scene. Any yeah. fucking scene with this dude in there. I couldn't tell you what the name of the actors is. I, I ran across it randomly one day um, on Netflix. Somebody said you got to check this movie out. So I said yeah. okay. Um, and then trying to find a, a UK DVD release mm-hmm. of that was fucking. Yeah, I mean, I think you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like a, I found one. It was a German copy. I was you know <laughs> couldn't play it, so I had to buy another one. It just it's so fucking good. Um, I'm totally down for the remake. I'm lost in my head to who I would have. I know you've got a few guys who you'd pick who would take on the role as a main oh, character. Yeah. But I mean, for me, like maybe I would, I would go like if you shave Dave Franco's head, <laughs> right? Because it's it's kind of, it's almost like Old Boy, yeah, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So you know when you saw like Josh Brolin in Old Boy, you would never have seen Josh Brolin playing that kind of character, exactly. Uh, you know because he's always played the clean cut kind of like you look at him in mob uh what's it uh gangster squad very clean yeah. cut kind of guy I mean, he's he's rough around the edges i mean i mean who knows i don't know I, you I, tell I totally, me i totally agree with you i mean like i was, I was that's why i said before the thing i was like yeah. well think think about it and you thought exactly the same i would the beauty of that movie is that this guy what i went in there not knowing who the dude was mm-hmm. they just didn't look like some hard man straight away like you couldn't cast the jason statham or no, bruce willis no, no, or an right. arnold schwarzenegger or stallone he's very of, like, uh, un- un- yeah. unassuming like yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't know who's about totally, the movie so yeah, i would yeah, totally yeah. i would totally get an actor who's just an actor and then just make them the, you know make them the power oh my god dude i just fucking thought of this right okay so uh anybody out there who likes um conjuring who likes um you know uh insidious anything like that james mm. wan has another film who directed that film the film's called death sentence mm. death sentence with kevin bacon yeah is this fucking movie i've just realized it. <laughs> death sentence is about a guy whose son gets killed and he goes on a rampage to get revenge on his son. Yeah. Uh, revenge for his son who gets killed. He shaves his fucking head because mm. he's like a, he's an insurance salesman. And yeah. then he goes on a fucking sick rampage. And then you find it. that he's got like military training. No, no, he doesn't okay, have any no, military okay. training. That's the great thing about it. Oh, okay. James Wan directed it. It came out like 07. Oh, yeah. And I've just realized when you were talking about how yeah. unassuming yeah. it was, yeah, it just brought, it brought in my mind yeah. like, um, you know, uh, Kevin Bacon in that movie. So yeah. somebody like Kevin Bacon, that type of like character, you don't really see Kevin Bacon playing yeah. this like sort of like normal dude to hard mm-hmm. motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But you make a really valid point. Yeah. I, I'm for me, I'm lost. I, I, I get. I would think somebody like Got any Dave casting Franco. ideas, Sash? I don't know. Just any one of the younger can, Franco. Up and, Franco would be good. You're not James, but Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave, that's what I mean. Dave because Franco. because Dave is, you know, he hasn't got anything right now. He's still trying to prove himself. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, you look at him, you don't think tough guy yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. But put him through training camp or whatever, I think it'd be a good. Even like, rough up, for rough him. up Zac Efron a little bit. I reckon. Yeah, even Zac. Yeah, yeah, Zac yeah. Efron. Could. You're on a Zac Efron trip at the moment. No, <laughs> me, it's me. Last, last week he was casting him in everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Zac ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Can do ben Affleck. <laughs> No, 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 but you know what I mean. Like, uh, I wasn't actually going to go there with Afro, Afro with this because, like, you know, he's too clean cut. He's too clean cut. What about Miles Miller? Yeah, Miles uh, Miller. Miles Teller. Miles, Miles Teller, Teller. Yeah, Miles, Miles Teller. Teller could. No, Definitely. you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, even you know what? I would go the other way, and not not because I don't give a shit. You know, I don't yeah. care about race or anything. Yeah, I would go with a uh, man. I can't remember his name. The guy from Creed. The main yeah. guy from Creed. What? Oh, uh, what? Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, I would get him in that. See, I wouldn't because of Creed. Uh huh. Because he can. You've seen him, you've seen him handle him. himself. Yeah. yeah I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I, you know, I get someone else of that caliber, but mm-hmm. not necessarily him because when I see him, I think Creed. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know I mean, mean, there's a few, there's a few yeah, young actors out there. Totally. I would, but I think the entire point of this is that, like, yeah. it has to be difficult to cast. Yeah. Because. You have to be, a, you have to find an actor who on one side of it is like very quiet, very, yeah. cause that's the kind of character he's, he's not, he's not clean cut, but he's mm. quiet, he keeps to himself, but then it's just, just like that switch that switch. goes Yeah, on, exactly. Yeah. And he goes I, on to a fucking dark side mode. But and I, would that's totally, what you want. I would totally cast a guy that has never done action before. Mm. Yes. You know, okay. just so that people be like, what you know what I mean like literally yeah, yeah. what you know because that's again that's, that's yeah. Josh Brolin in Old yeah, Boy is exactly because like we can imagine this going to be less martial arts then do we think so just no this is martial gun- arts oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but, would the, but would the remake be that or would it be more gun action and just fist fighting because if you're casting somebody yeah. like that they're not going to have the the skills to do, but that's why you Kung put. Who, you know but that's I mean? why you put him through military training. Military training because he's not. Like, he's like, not in like, the film. He's not yeah. like 
you know, uh, chop or anything mm-hmm. like yeah. that. It's it's military precision, right. special That's, forces, like, yeah, okay, so, yeah. martial arts. So it's it's what you would more see in like an expendables type of fighting, where it's mm-hmm. not yeah. very uh, flamboyant yeah. but very effective and technical. Okay, and that's what you get in this yeah. movie. I, I I would say to anybody who hasn't seen it, and I think Satcher will echo yeah, my just totally echo, check it what's out. What's that fucking movie? Man from yeah. nowhere. Yeah. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Like, absolutely Line, recommend so far, it. New Line have acquired the rights as mm-hmm. of this week. There's no director attached. There's no writers or anything. No. So you know, like I do like this movie. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But you know, I, I'm open to a remake mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, dep- yeah, yeah. Depending, um, it all depends on how they go with. But if they don't, I'm still happy because yeah. it exists. It's exactly. Great right. yeah. yeah. So that's anyway. uh, that's in the pipeline, right? So coming on to our sort of last hot topic of the day, um, we've spoken a lot about Mel Gibson over yeah. the last few weeks. Yeah. And, uh, I was now, super excited about this. Yeah, and then basically, so Mel Gibson hasn't directed a feature film since 2060's Apocalypto. Um, but, um, you know, he's a great success as a filmmaker, um, you know, with um, sort of Braveheart um, and Passion of the Christ. Um, so as an actor, he's not the drawer he used to be um, due to more like personal things. Um, but the uh, posters just dropped for his uh, latest film, Hacksaw Ridge. Um, so this is Andrew Garfield uh, starring in a World War II drama as a US military doctor um, who saved 75 soldiers during the Battle of Okinawa. Uh, Okinawa. 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 That's where um, Mr. Miyagi is from. Oh, ah, interesting. Okinawa Karate. Um, so he plays uh, Desmond T. Doss. Um, so and he basically does all this without carrying a weapon. Um, so Vince Vaughn, Hugo Weaving, Sam Worthington, uh, Teresa Palmer, and one of Gibson's sons, uh, Milo Gibson, will co-star in the film. So the script is by Randall Wallace, who is a collaborator with Mel Gibson on a lot, who done Braveheart and Passion. He worked with him. Uh, he actually directed Gibson in We Were Soldiers. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, and I think, you know, Gibson is a talented filmmaker. And uh, what do you guys think? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, so... Um let, let's not not to start like a a war about this or anything else like that. But I really like Andrew Garfield as an actor. Yes, um, I, I think oh, yeah. I think he's a good actor. Again, some people have mixed reviews on Amazing Spider Man. I like it. Some people don't. Mm-hmm. Let's move on from it. But personally, I think he's a, he's a good brooding actor. Mm-hmm. He has that in him uh, to go dark side if he needs to. And I think for anybody who hasn't seen um, somebody go like uh, Andrew Garfield, go like, watch uh, Ninety Nine Homes. Um, which is about, it's during the whole market crash and he works for a, um, he works with a real estate company mm-hmm. trying to get his home back who actually took his home from him. Um, and it, it stars the guy, um, uh, Michael Shannon, who played Zod in mm-hmm. Man of Steel. So, um, I definitely recommend it, uh, for that movie. I'm down for it. I love, uh, I love Mel Gibson as an actor. And yeah. I love Mel Gibson as a director. Anything, anything he touches, whether, whatever your views are on what he's like and, as a you person, know, yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, look, think of like Mayweather. He's a great boxer but as a, as a person he's a cunt right same way Mel Gibson may be an asshole outside of the director's chair outside of the actor's uh, actor's space but in that space he's one of the, he's one of the masters and there is a reason why this film is going to be good because he is fucking good yeah. he's casting Andrew Garfield and I guarantee you with somebody like uh, Mel Gibson at the helm you will get Andrew Garfield who will get the best out of Andrew Garfield and you'll see that come through on, on the screen and a World War II movie I mean yeah there's some other great talent there as yeah, well. yeah. you know you can see they're happy to work with Gibson yeah. and stuff like and that and that's why I think everybody's kind of like okay let's get off the hate Gibson train mm-hmm. and let's get back on the let's make some fucking money train yeah, yeah. and that's he you know Apocalypto you know uh, Passion of the Christ you know, those films they, I don't think the bank like the amount it cost to make was very high, mm-hmm. but the the rewards that were reaped from yeah, those yeah. kind of movies. And he's always, he's not afraid to go left field, which means that you're going to watch this movie and you're not going to think, he's going to see something a little bit different. And that's kind won't of be, like what Mel Gibson... Be afraid of some violent yeah. blood. And that's what Mel Gibson sure, yeah. brings to the brings to the fray. And I'm happy for it. I mean, again, Satchel might have a different view, but Andrew Garfield starring it, I'm Satchel, totally Hacksaw Ridge. I, I don't have a different view. I look. I said Mike. Oh, no, no, I don't. I mean, like Andrew Garfield, fantastic talent. There's no denying he's mm. Oscar worthy caliber. I think so. He did a good Spider Man. I just, I'm just not a fan of those movies. Yeah, okay. All right, him that's him? all I'm going to talk about. That, um, but no, he's a fantastic actor. Loved him in Social Network. Well deserved the Oscar nod there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in terms of um, 
this movie, I mean, like, Randall Wallace is collaborating with Gibson again on the screenplay. He's worked with him on We Were Soldiers and Braveheart. He's also done uh, The Man with the Iron Mask and Pearl Harbor and stuff. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of historical kind of stuff. And I know the script for this thing is going to be absolutely stellar because oh, those yeah. movies are a testament to what this guy can do and write. And, um, you know, him and Gibson's relationship is proven and tested. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go on another rant on why Mel Gibson's great. I think I've done that on yeah, about three, four... Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I do it every time, and Leo said it this week. Um, no, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see this movie. Um, I am hoping it's a return to form for Gibson mm -hmm. as a director. Um, but this is a director that hasn't made a shit film. He yeah. hasn't made a shit film, in and, my opinion. And I do, I do like the fact that, you, know, you know, we spoke um, about Gibson, yeah. you know, coming back, and we spoke about Passion yeah. of Christ and whether his name should be on the marquee mm -hmm. as a director. They've clearly gone on this poster from the acclaimed director of Braveheart and the Passion of the Christ. No mention not, of him. So there's no mention of him, but they they are saying, look, they're we touching on his hits. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting where we talked about that, where we said, have the names of the films by who brought yeah. you, but haven't actually dropped his name. So, interesting. It'd be good. I mean, yeah. definitely, I think the, the one point to touch upon, uh, I'm, the last thing I'm going to touch upon this is, mm. um, I hope I see a different side of Andrew Goff, and you will see it, just like I saw from uh, Shia LaBeouf mm -hmm. yeah. in uh, Fury. Yeah. Because, I, awesome, fuck, yeah. you know, that yeah. film is fucking badass and he was definitely like a winning point mm -hmm. in that movie. Yeah. Plus, like, you know, it's got a stellar cast. I mean, Vince Vaughn's in there. Yeah, yeah. And, I love me with some Vince Vaughn. And, 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 and you know what? I think I think Gibson's probably going to bring out another side to Vince Vaughn. We that see we a little bit in True Detective. In a long yeah. time. Yeah. Because yeah. Before, well. before the comedy, mm -hmm. he was a serious actor and he hasn't mm -hmm. done that in a long time. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table in this um He's got his son. Hugo weaving, he, I, yeah, like he's Hugo weaving kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and he's put he's put his son in there who looks just like him, yeah, like yeah, about yeah, four, yeah. you know, like fifty <laughs> years ago. I mean, like he looks like Mad Max. So yeah, yeah. you know, let's go. Okay. Let's um, so that's out in November this year. So we're looking forward to see when the first trailer drops of that. Um, so we're just going to talk now a little bit about some trailer reactions. So some trailers which have dropped sort of like within the last week or two. Um, first one up is the uh, Mechanic Resurrection. Uh, Jason Statham, Jessica Alba, and Tommy Lee Jones. Um, I, I really enjoyed this trailer. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's Jason Statham doing what he does. Um, generally, I've kind of gone off Statham over the last few films, but this seems to be a little bit more return to form. Um, the trailer was just enjoyable. Um, I'm, I'm down for this. I love Jason Statham. Seriously, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a Jason Statham mm -hmm. fan. Fair enough. He's had a few hummingbirds along the way, yeah. but you know, um, not every film you do is going to be golden. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's a bit underrated because he, you know, he can act. You know what I mean? He has acted, mm -hmm. you know, but he's now typecast in this action movie yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. and he quite clearly enjoys doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd like to see him do more stuff like Lockstock and stuff personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, um, lo I love the trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't a fan of the first film, but I like, I like, um, what's it? Charles Bronson. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. what it is. You got all the Charles Bronson. If you guys don't know who jo Charles Bronson is, just go on Netflix. Go on Netflix. Yeah. We spoke about it like Death Wish. Yeah. Everything's, week, everything's yeah. on Netflix. Check them out. But you know, this, this trailer was good. I love the cast. You got, what's it? Jessica Alba yeah. in there. Always good for eye candy and like uh, <laughs> Tommy Jones is Tommy a little Jones, bit yeah. to form, so exactly. Yeah. For me, Tommy, for you me, you're, you're not a fan. Of yeah, Statham and I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of him um, when he does these type of movies. I think I've, I just, I've just seen. It's very like yeah. cut and paste, very generic. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, I see. Like, I totally get why people are gonna love it, and I totally see why. I, I totally see why people are gonna watch it. It's mm -hmm. gonna make money. Uh, me personally, I just wasn't that super impressed by it. But that's only because it's just another fucking statement film. Yeah, right? that's very nice. But. All right, so the other uh, trailer drop this week was Sully, um, directed by Clint Eastwood, starring Tom Hanks um, with Aaron Eckhart and Oscar nominee Laura Linney. So this is based on the um, real-life events of where the plane was landed on the Hudson River in New York. Um, this is going to be an Oscar-type film. Um, it's going to be good. Potentially, I mean, the tone of it, the look of it, I really am looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be in a similar same vein as sort of like Denzel um, in his film. Um, and, uh, with, flight, flight. Um, you know, this is a true story, and those, film, you know, Clint Eastwood doesn't put a foot wrong when it comes to directing. So, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to this. What do you guys? It's Clint Eastwood, mate. Uh, you've said it. You you put it on. You know, hit the nail on the head right there. It's Clint Eastwood. I love me some Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. It's good. it looks good. The trailer looks fantastic. I definitely recommend you guys go watch it. Um, uh, I, you know, I enjoyed it. I yeah. watched it last Sasha. night. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and the one, uh, the third trailer is Why Him? Oh, love uh, this. Brian Cranston and James Franco. 
Um, so this is, uh, Brian Cranston is the, uh, the, the dad of the family. Um, he is going to meet his uh, daughter's boyfriend and obviously is not what he thought he might be. Um, the trailer was quite funny. Uh, the only thing that disappointed me about the trailer was um, the editing of the trailer wasn't fantastic. I think the music didn't fit the trailer yeah. very well. And the way they edited the music with the trailer kind of took away and it seemed like essentially less funny than what it would have been. But I, for me, you can't go wrong with Brian Cranston. I yeah. love him. You know, for me, it echoes and, a lot of like... It's like an adult version of maybe Marco in the Middle, but... Um, it's, I thought I thought it echoes a lot of Meet the Fuckers. Oh, no, yeah, not yeah. Meet the Fuckers, Meet the Parents. Meet the parents. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was it's very much premise, like that. It's, so, meet, it's Meet the Boyfriend, basically. Yeah, so, I, I quite um, like it, man. I love Brian yeah. Cranston. Why was he not Lex Luthor in, man, in everything? Absolutely. Why is he not Lex Luthor in everything? I don't understand. What's interesting is he recently had an interview with Larry King and he said he's been wanting to get into the superhero franchise for a while. Yeah. Um, not a franchise, but you know, but this opportunity come up, and now he's going to be in Power Rangers and Zordon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Zordon yeah. Power Rangers. So, um, you know, it's like he's been looking for something for a while, and the Power Rangers has taken his interest. It's like Warner Brothers, where the hell have you been? But yeah, so I mean, this trailer, it, it did, it has made me want to go see the film. Yeah, yeah. What about you guys, James Franco, Brian yeah. Cranston. In. Don't need to say anything. That's Just it. In. Sign sold. Sign, take sold. my money. Take no worries. Yeah. Trailers. Uh, and the last one we're going to talk about is War Dogs. Um, Jonah Hill, Miles Teller, Bradley Cooper. Um, Anna de Armas from uh, Knock Knock, and directed by Todd Phillips of The Hangover. This just looks fun. Yeah, yeah. it looks good. It looks good. It's the second trailer that dropped. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one I think is a lot funnier. Mm-hmm. This one's a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I'm down. I, I was down. Anything with uh, anything with that sort of Todd Phillips, Judd Apatow twist to it, mm-hmm. it's always good. It's why pop stars funny. You know, it's why all those type of films are funny. I, I'm 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 in. I don't think I, mean, it, it I don't funny. think it's in the same vein as that though. I mean, um, look. He did the Hangover trilogy. He did one of my personal favorites, Old School. Yeah. He did the mm-hmm. Starsky and Hutch remake, and he did a uh, Road Trip. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've loved Tom Tom Phillips as far as I can remember because Old School is that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that good a movie. Great. I love that film. One of my best friends. We call him Frank the Tank, but you know. Um, <laughs> It's, you know, um, he did The Big Bounce last year, which was a fantastic movie. It was a different tone of movie and a different Mm -hmm. type of comedy kind of movie on a much more serious kind of subject matter. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the same kind of tone he's going for in this because it's a different shift to the ha-ha funny to, you know what I mean? Different kind of comedy that we're used to from Todd Phillips. I actually think um, this is a really good move for him because he's now matured as a film director. He's also um, widened his power it a lot more and um, he's taking serious issues now by doing like you know uh, true stories now as a, as opposed to another hangover sequel mm-hmm. yeah. um, I see he's got Bradley Cooper in there in a cameo kind of role or supporting mm-hmm. kind of role so you know probably will have some of his like old you know also old, old Jonah back. Hill yeah. what happened Jonah Hill what been... happened to you man you just like <laughs> no what I'm saying is oh. he went from like 22 Jump Street yeah to um, Moneyball, no, it wasn't even Moneyball because it was no, for, no. What I mean is, you look at in twenty twenty one Jump Street, it's quite thin. Mm-hmm. And oh, then right, Wolf yeah. of Wall Street, he's put it on, and mm. in this, I don't know if it's for the role or he's just let himself go again. Uh, you know, but I was super impressed by how much weight he lost. And I've seen him in this, and I'm like, oh, Jonah. What's happening? What's, that, that, you need that, to get on that primal blueprint. Bro. That, 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 yeah, I <laughs> just love him as an actor. So yeah, um, he's good. I mean, it's going to be funny anyway. Uh, I'm totally down for it. Yeah, um, yeah that's, that's why good. when I said to you, yeah. check the trailer yeah. out. It's so good. So that's our trailer reactions. Cool. Um, so now we're going to move on to film flashback. So this is where we look at where our affiliation of the silver screen uh, love for it began. And we look at films that were released this week, 10, 20, and 30 years ago. So films that were released um, 10 years ago this week. Um, the big two were uh, Scanner Darkly. I, uh, which um, I actually haven't seen. That was it's um, a cell shaded yeah, yeah. So um, Danny Jr. Was it? Was yeah, it? Danny, Danny Jr. is in it. Yeah. Cell shaded film, and also uh, Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Man's Chest. Which I'm exhausted by that franchise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, every time I think of that now, I just think of the Lonely Island. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that, right? I saw, yeah, Michael Bolton. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, that's another sequel that we're going to get, which we didn't ask for, which is another Pirates that's going to be coming out soon. Um, I love the first film; it was great, um, great take. But everything since then, the Scanner Darkly is uh, is, it came out like right after um, uh, Matrix fame, like right Mm -hmm. after Revolutions. Mm -hmm. That's that sort of around the time it came out, and uh, 
No, no, no. Scanner no. Darkly came out. So, yeah. so Scanner Darkly was July 2006. Yeah, so yeah. Revolutions yeah. was so when? 10 years ago. And Matrix Matrix Revolutions was right after. Hold on, I'll just double check. Six that. months. Six yeah, months Matrix after. Revolutions came out in like. Do you know, no, no, I'm, I'm wrong. Year. 2003, no? Yeah, 2003. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's it, it's kind of like riding on the, on Keanu Reeves' fame. Mm. Um, I wasn't that impressed by it, to be fair. Yeah. I, I didn't. I, I liked it. I liked the idea because it had Woody Harrelson in it as well mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I liked the idea of it, but it was. Um, yeah, I just I yeah, got confused. It didn't, it didn't, I got confused. Yeah, I was well, fucking well, wasn't so, there. But um, what else? So released uh, tw- so well, twenty years. Oh, okay. So yeah, go on. No, 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 that, oh, I was going to go on the complete other bandwagon there. Um, I actually quite like. I quite like the Scanner Darkly. Yeah. As you read the novel, and oh, okay. what what I saw from novel to screen, I thought it was a really good adaptation. Okay. Um, um, I can't remember the doc- Richard Link- Linklater. Didn't he do? Oh, he did Boyhood, and he did um, the Before the Sunrise kind right, of film. Okay. So. You know that goes to show he's he's a very strange director. He does you know he does a lot something of, a bit different. Yeah. That likes to do a bit different, and that's probably where the um, where where the um, cell shading this came yeah. from, which I felt worked for the context of the movie yeah. and but stuff. I think in general um, movie audience, it's going to be a, oh yeah like yeah, yeah totally, totally, so, yeah totally totally totally. And I like personally me, I like the aesthetic because mm-hmm. it was something different. As for Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. Um, I, I like the pirate films. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I actually, I'm, I'm in the camp. Like, you know what? Dead Man's Chest, I remember not liking it in cinema, mm-hmm. but I think it's a case of pacing issues. You see, um, with the pirates film, that one in particular, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it till they got to the freaking island and they played past the parcel with the dead man's chest. Right, that yeah. action and wasn't this where they were on the big yeah, wheel? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that action set piece... Yeah, takes probably you, pulled out, it pulled pulls out you movie, right? out of the whole movie because yeah, you're like bored and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then they go back to the movie mm-hmm. and then you're like... Is this the one with the cut scene at the end of the credits with the dog as the ruler of the people? Is that the yeah. one yes, one? yes. Right, okay. But at the end, at the, you know, at the end of that set piece, you're like, what just happened? Yeah. I've forgotten what I invested my time yeah. in because that set piece goes on for almost 45 minutes. You know what I mean? So it's a good point. Cut yeah. that out. It might be a If you movie. cut it out, because I watched, the second time I watched it was on DVD mm-hmm. kind of thing and I kind of skipped forward. I might do that, thing. you know. Give and it actually, skip that scene. Yeah, skip that scene. Trust me, there's a good movie in there. It's just, you know, they just went yeah. nuts on the Kind of like my six pack. It's yeah. in here. It's yeah. Like, it's <laughs> in there. Uh, right, so yeah. 20, years ago, uh, 20 years ago this week, so July 2nd was Independence Day. Um, We've spoken enough about it over the last few weeks. Just fantastic freaking movie. Um, and also, um, Phenomenon. Phenom- John, oh, Travolta. John Travolta. John Travolta. He's an alien or something, right? Start, he sees all lights and he gets these powers and he starts getting these telekinesis powers. I watched that, yeah, in, I I watched that, that in Miami yeah, as a kid. Like <laughs> so like it's, uh, it was uh, yeah. very, yeah, a bit strange. I think that was coming off near around the time of sort of like Face Off and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it didn't perform that well at the box office. But um, if you haven't seen check out the trailer on YouTube. Um, it's, 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 it's a different. classic trailer of that time. Yeah. Um, and then it released uh, 30 years ago uh, this week. Oh, some classics. Um, July 1st, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is such an amazing ending that to that. Like where what? he kills the bad guy yeah. in that film. Yeah. Where he, like, throws a knife, catches it, throws it back, knife yeah. in the head. I was like, what? what? <laughs> I'm going to say this. If you have not seen Big T- Trouble in Little China, just do it. Yeah, just, do it just do it. it. Just do yeah. it. It's a great, it great Kurt Russell movie. Right at like, the end of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right in film. and say, Sash... You're great. You suggested the best movie I've ever seen. No, seriously, it's um, awesome. It's good. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and also, two other films that came out that week as well. We had Psycho 3. Um, mm-hmm. Is that the one on the phone? I don't even remember. Uh, I think that's the one where he spends the time um, on talking about the radio. This, this is a personal favourite of mine. Um, the Great Mouse Detective, Basil. Disney. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. Oh, Jesus Holmes. Christ! Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's thirty years ago now. That wow. that I loved that film growing up. Um, Basil Grey, Mouse Detective. You had uh, Ratting, Rattington, uh, yeah. Yeah. the main villain. Um, some great voice casting in there, and it's a classic. So if you like your Disney, um, go back and definitely watch that one. Um, and that was thirty years ago. Um, but cool. yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. I've heard rumors about potentially a remake of that as well. Yeah, with the rock. On for, yeah, with so, the rock. But I've not heard anything. The Rock is <laughs> like uh, the Rock. Everything. He's turning. Into you want to Samuel reboot? Jackson you want to reboot everything. something? Get the rock, yeah, yeah. right. So, and so, and that was the uh, film flashback. Cool. Um, right now, we're moving on to the Channel Flick Challenge. Uh, so, oh, I need to get my shit back. I need to win again. Yeah. So, Sasha um, claimed his first win last week. 
Um, so we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to keep with the uh, rock, paper, scissors, make it simple. Um, I've got the film. So basic channel flick challenges. It's late at night. Um, you're, you're kind of in bed. You're about to fall asleep. You don't want to put on a show that you're actually <laughs> really interested in watching. So potentially there's two movies coming on. You're going to put it on the background. A or B, which are you going to choose? These guys have got 30 seconds to solve the argument. They also have 20 second rebuttal on each other's and I will award points on what I feel like, basically. Because, um, <laughs> you know, we're logical here. That's yeah, what I mean. exactly. We, um, we I, tried to take I, a scientific I'll approach. I'll try and give it on the basis of the argument um, of, uh, rather than anything else, but hey, if you made me laugh or whatever, it might give you more points. So, uh, very much like whose line is it anyway. So, basically, what, what we're saying is Ken like. can be easily Amuse bought. me. Amuse <laughs> me. Be mindful, I did buy you a chocolate bar when I came out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an extra point. Yeah. No. So, Brings gifts to the podcast. Right. Okay, guys. Rock, paper, scissors. One, so, two, we're going to go on, 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 on scissors we throw, right? Yeah. One, so two, Rock, release. paper, okay. scissors, right? right okay. okay. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. There we go. Okay. So, Leah, do you get the chance you either go first and pick the film or you go second and have more time? Oh, I pick the film first. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, um, we have uh, choice A, Men in Black. Choice B, Ace Ventura, um, Pet Detective. Men in Black. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not too hard. Right. Let's get a timer on this. Um... Okay, so Leo, you have 30 seconds uh, to defend Men in Black. Uh, go. Don't have to say much. I don't have to say too much. Men in Black is a fantastic movie. It's got the pedigree of around the world where people are like the Men in Black. Is it a real thing? Is it not? It keeps you creeping. Comedy from Will Smith. The uh, the stark comedy from Tommy Lee Jones. And how fantastic that it all just melds together. Builds a whole universe and everyone's like super interested, spawned off fantastic sequels. Um, and yeah, I mean, when I watch that movie, it just brings me back to my childhood. It brings me back, brings that element Sorry. of surprise. Sasha, you have 30 seconds to defend Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, go. I need to defend this movie. It's, it's hands down like one of his greatest movies ever. If you gave me a choice out of Men in Black and Ace Ventura, it's Ace Ventura hands down. Jim Carrey's never been more funnier in this. He's more funnier than Will Smith in Men in Black. He's like, you know, he just straight up owns and, you know, it's his debut role. And, you know, it's got dogs and parrots and all kinds of stuff for all you animal lovers and stuff. He, the bit where the start, Time. the opening. Ace Ventura. So you have 20 seconds, Rabal, go. Ace Ventura may be a great film, and I totally agree with that. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the pedigree that Men in Black does. If you look at Men in Black, it's got amazing great actors in there, amazing great storyline. It captivates you the entire time and just, just sparks that childlike wonder in you. I'm, I'm totally down for that movie. And let's just, let's just talk about the acting pedigree that you Time. do have in Will Smith. Uh, 20 seconds. Which unfortunately wasn't discovered until Ali. Um, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. But, no, no, no. I'm sorry. He was just doing his Prince thing. Uh, what's that? Fresh Prince thing. With, uh, what's his name? Um, old man that just showed up. Tommy Lee Jones. Sorry. It's very known fact that he never wanted any, anything to do with those movies. It was anything but a paycheck. By the time the third time. one came out, he was barely in it. Okay. <laughs> Not a lot of defending of your own film there, my friend. Uh, a little tight. Um, going to go to my assistant D what do you reckon who took the argument gosh um, I don't know I might be a bit um, I'm in favour of Ace Ventura because that is better much better film mm -hmm. in Men in but Black. we're talking about the argument in terms, the argument. Argument. in terms of the argument I think Leo Wood had more rebuttals yeah, yeah. I'm going to give it to you. I agree. Um, for me personally, I prefer Ace Ventura. Yeah. Um, I think you could have talked more about how like, there's so many quotable lines in that movie. Yeah. I was waiting for you to yeah. drop like yeah. all righty then, <laughs> all that <laughs> shit. Yeah. Um, you could have just <laughs> done that for 30 seconds. <laughs> like a glove. Uh, yeah, so I think there's some real missed opportunities by Saturday. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to give that round to Leo. Uh, we're going to do best of three. So, um, Leo, you've got, if you take the next one, you win this week. Um, so actually got a chance to put it we back. We rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Oh, right. Sasha, right. Picking the film or um, going second for more time? Uh, going second for more time. Okay. So, uh, Leo, you have uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves or The Day After Tomorrow. 
Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Right, 30 seconds, go. Uh, well, let's talk about a movie that put Kevin Costner on the map, first off. Also, um, I'm just going to put this right off the bat. Your movie doesn't have Sean Connery. Ours does. But very simple. It's got the most quotable, mo- one of the most famous songs for a movie ever, ever in movie history, right, with Brian Adams, who is Canada's national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> on top of which... Um, you know, I, I can't say enough, but I'll cut his heart out with a fucking spoon. Yeah, you just so, got you... right, Sasha. Thirty seconds, go. Do you want to just no, quit I, now, I, Sasha? I, I did say go. <laughs> did you forget the movie? Day after tomorrow. Do you know the movie? Ice covering New York. <laughs> Should we just concede it? <laughs> <laughs> What have I done? <laughs> um, all right, okay. I, I, I got I'm that. Just gonna, I'm just going to press it. I'm just going to press it. I need to cut in. I need to stop the fight. I got the guy's that. on the ground. I got He's that unconscious. I got He's that. not breathing. <laughs> Call the doctor. This fight is I was over. Just, do, you know, do you know what? Whatever you were going to come with, I was going to hit you with Alan Rickman yeah. and Morgan Freeman. That is it. That would have been a one-two yeah. punch combo. Game over. Sorry, bro. Oh. Look, good match. I think that was a, take that as a win. No yeah, contest. And, and this is that, that's, that's, that's a no contest. That's, and that's, that's the that's, way that's, the cookie crumbles. That's a TKO. <laughs> Um, and that's why uh, that's why the uh, rock paper scissors is so important uh, right you so, just got you know what I just did to you yeah. I just 8 mile you because you like even in 8 mile right at the end when he's like yeah. I let the boss to go first and then I went first and it just did everything that yeah. you couldn't and then you were like I got nothing to say <laughs> yeah because everybody from the 313 put your motherfucking hands <laughs> on the <phone> follow me <laughs> Uh, right, so um, we're going to do a quick box office review now. Um, so we're going to look at um, sort of like what's taken um, over the weekend. So um, talking, so basically we're looking at the figures. Um, obviously, we're recording this on uh, Sunday, so we haven't had all the figures yet. But but Finding Dory is performing just as expected. It pulled in an estimated 13.4 million on Friday and is looking around maybe 52 million again for the weekend. Absolutely huge. Um the Purge uh, election year scored an estimated 14.7 uh, million on Friday. And it's looking at a three day weekend of around 37 million. So, actually, very similar to um, The Conjuring 2, which did about 40 million on its opening weekend as well. So, you know, that horror type movie early in the summer seems to be picking up well. You don't have to wait to Halloween for these things. Mm-hmm. Um, the looking to finish second behind uh, Dory is Legend of Tarzan. So that's definitely a movie that I want to see. Um, but um, so it's impressive, forty million on Friday. So again, looking at forty uh, about three weekend and three week and day total of about forty five million. Um, also, the big other release was still Spielberg's The BFG. Now we haven't had all the figures in for that because obviously it was released on the Thursday, but Thursday and Friday aren't a big day for kids' films. So we're expecting big numbers on Saturday and Sunday. So potentially it's going to finish um, second or third. Uh, behind Tarzan it just depends on what it does so those films guys Tarzan BFG Purge what are we thinking uh, I'm, I'm yeah we'll see we'll see what happens I mean um, B, uh, BFG I reckon we'll take it mm-hmm. I think BFG's BFG's got that that roll doll love from behind it uh, Tarzan will come in second um, so yeah and then uh, what was the other one um, the, the, the Purge the Purge, yeah. yeah. I, I, to be fair, I don't give a shit about I mean, I like the first one. The second one, a lot of people say it's better than the first. I think you're wrong, but um, so mm-hmm. fuck you. But <laughs> um, but yeah, just just like, here's the idea. I'm just going to quickly round off why The Purge is wrong. It will happen once and it will be successful just once. Afterwards, everyone's just going to spend all their money on locking down their addresses. And if you're that one dude rocking around, the day after The Purge, people are going to be like, you were trying to knock on people's doors, be like, hey, I want to kill you. Everyone's going to go, you're a dick. No, fuck yeah. you. No, I mean, what's people. interesting about the, this purge is actually at the moment it's outperforming the first two in terms of taking mm-hmm. so you know there's uh, I think it's more of the, the genre that's yeah. bringing people in rather than it's that thing film. of I want to kill my boss I want one day to do it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly I right. get it but and uh, maybe it's called it's because it's called the election uh, maybe you know people in America are sick of politics <laughs> at yeah. the yeah. moment like with who they've got yeah exactly Donald Trump Don, yeah exactly ah, now well, fuck that at imagine least, if I could get Donald Trump on at least purge. Trump at least you know I don't like him he's a cunt but at least he's 
fucking unapologetic and he's he's not he's honest I'll give him that he's fucking honest Hillary she's a lying snake yeah she's a lying piece of shit it's, fuck it, that shit it's it's a rock and a hard place I mean, yeah picking those so, two yes, the devil you know <laughs> as opposed to the devil you don't yeah. Yeah, there you go um, so moving on to the UK box office so the big film release uh, this week was uh, Secret Life of Pets um, which does a fantastic this is Kevin Hart right um, yeah Kevin yeah. Hart's got a big presence in that movie um, Independence Day um, as well but uh, Secret Life of Pets has opened better than Independence mm-hmm. Day um, I think maybe some Bad of the news. word of mouth about Independence Day, some of the reviews haven't been that favourable to it. Um, but Secret Life of Pets, I think people have really enjoyed the trailers. Um, it's coming off great success of uh, Zootopia earlier this year. So that kind of animal uh, comedy um, animation. Um, I'm, I'm down to see this movie. Yeah, I'm me too. I mean, I'll check it out. I still like Independence Day more, but it's only because mm-hmm. I've got a special love for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, fuck it. They're both going to be good films. They're both yeah. good films. It's just just, go, just get out there, put some money down. And if, unless you really are interested then you can call up my pal Cesar Palace. I'm sure he'll hook you up but apart from that get out there throw your money into the fucking industry and let's just keep it going so um, make, keep making the other money. movie out this week um, in the UK is absolutely fabulous the movie um, so people are the t- fans of the TV show I have uh, no interest in I, have no, I saw the trailer for this and <laughs> couldn't care uh, it was dire for yeah. me um, it was on Rebel front. Wilson is probably the only decent thing about yeah, it. yeah I mean I, I, know, I know I know people who love the TV show um, you know potentially might like this movie I think it's just come far too late uh, yeah. on the TV show um, my um, missus was excited the, the trailer yeah, yeah and the trailer was on the front of the nice guys we saw that yeah. mm-hmm. I just wasn't feeling that at all um, so um that's pretty much it box office review mm-hmm. um, so that's that's everything for our show today um, so we're just going to move on to any other business is there anything you guys wanted to bring up this week uh, I'm, you had some stuff you want to talk about no for me personally uh, Outcast if you guys haven't seen that definitely go check that out uh, TV show wise it's really really good um, it's based on a comic book so uh, you know it's if you've got a chance to read a comic book it's not finite but definitely check that out too oh, I, uh, thought, I thought you were talking about the movie with Nicolas Cage no no no, 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 no there's a TV show called Outcast at the moment I'm not going to ruin too much of it I, if I go to, if I go into too much I'll end up ruining it uh, but you know it, it's, it's based on a comic book and if you guys are into the comic book I definitely also recommend you check that out um, that's sort of TV wise um, and then I, I would say video games wise like because i'm playing you know i'm a big video game fan but um i found out about the sd2 snes which is a cartridge that has every fucking game uh you know barring a few that had hard hardware issues for the snes that you can put it comes into one cartridge and it will play straight on your on super nintendo you see him writing this shit down he's like i want to check <laughs> no, this out no i was just saying all get an emulator put on your phone well no it's like it's like it's like an emulator no but it's like an emulator um but obviously don't emulate unless you have the cartridge um because we want to show love to the people that made the games unless you are a Cesar Palace type then crack on um and I very kind of the last thing in music that I'm listening to at the moment for me I would definitely recommend if you're a big fan of hip hop big fan of female hip hop uh fuck Iggy Azalea and her fake ass um you like some Nicki Minaj hard shit where she's like Roman in Moscow I recommend this girl she's a chola she's a little Mexican gangster her name's Snow the Product and she's fucking fantastic um if you get a chance Cookie Cutter is a fantastic song um or I I I again if you're Mexican any of my Latino brothers and sisters you'll totally be down with it um I guarantee you won't be disappointed so much love to her as well and if you can hook me up with one of these uh little snapbacks you got one of the work ones I'll be very happy I tweeted you last night so please hook me up that's it I'm down that's it <laughs> um just for me so some um some new releases this week on Netflix and um, they've um gone all Star Trek yeah. in anticipation of the new um, Star Trek movie Star Trek Beyond coming out so all the original series Next Generation Voyager all that it's all available on Netflix now so if you're a Trekkie you know you can definitely go check that out um, for me just some viral stuff that you might be interested in um, the um, Central Intelligence uh, The Rock and Kevin Hart some mm. of the interviews and some of the stuff they're doing in preparation the switching characters one has, really has been absolutely <laughs> brilliant so definitely go check some of that marketing material I'm excited to see that movie and um, yeah that's pretty much it from me this week Dylan, anything to recommend to anyone? Anything uh, else you want to discuss? Netflix-wise, I've been uh, watching a, bit, a few anime. Um, Ajin was uh, pretty cool. It's an interesting film. Uh, actually, no, it's a web series. Um, mm. And then Awari no Seraph. Um, and... Uh, I think that's about it for that's now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the last show I have to give is Game of Thrones. Oh, that last oh. episode! Fuck! If you haven't seen it, 
don't don't listen to this bit to skip ahead. Yeah, but um, fuck, j- j- man. Just get the end, but Game of Thrones, what a TV show. Yeah. Those last two episodes mm. in particular. We're badass. Um, just phenomenal. And I can't believe we're going to have to wait until like eight, nine, nine months, months right? for yeah. the next series. Um, just phenomenal. So the yeah. theory the last is, two episodes were like fucking So the th- there was a, it's just the imagery, yeah. the story, the characters. Um, the one shot in particular, and we've discussed it, is yeah. um, Jon Snow. Uh, waiting for those horses um, to gallop towards him in yeah. the Battle of the Bastards. Um, if you haven't seen it, also go on to YouTube and check out the Battle of the Bastards making of episode, um, of which HBO did. And it shows all the practical effects they did for that, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. That scene where the horses are running out, that is all real. It's not CGI. Mm-hmm. He stood there with his horses galloping towards him. The piles of bodies, that was all dummies dressed up, every single one individually enclosed. A phenomenal production. You can see this. the you can see the budget's like, grown and yeah. grown. Oh grown yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah, um, I mean, I was super impressed by. It. I think uh, my favorite thing. And so, I, you know, there there has been a fan theory going around mm-hmm. where they and again, this is a theory. Um, they didn't confirm it in the last episode, but you kind of led to believe it. Mm-hmm. But there's a fan theory going around that Jon Snow might actually be a Targaryen, yes. half Targaryen, which yes. is, uh, you know. But then there's another thing, whether or not George R. R. Martin is just going to be that guy who's going to mm-hmm. be guy. Oh, you like that theory? Well, too fucking bad. This is the way it is. And he actually ends up being um, Robert Targaryen, uh, Robert, um, Robert Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, it's, it's going to no, go either two ways. And I think the, the, the whole point is now the books are behind the TV yeah, show. yeah. yeah that's and the TV show are going to be like, you know what? We're going to do some stuff that's not going to be in the book. So mm. they might go one way in the TV show yeah. and the books will go a completely different way. DC TV, so, yeah, DC exactly. movie kind of thing. So I, yeah, think, yeah. I think with the, the Targaryen theory is, yes. Yeah, so the idea is that um, it's the one of the sons of the um, the Mad King. Mm. Um, he fell in love with um, uh, Stark's sister. They've had a kid. Um, obviously, he was killed by Robert. You know, and then Robert, because yeah. Robert wanted to be with her. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the father is a Targaryen. So basically, um, Khaleesi is his ne- his auntie. Yeah, right, okay. But um, if he's a Targaryen, so, because I think in the first, uh, even in the first episode, I think when, uh, when Ro- Ned, Ned Stark is going, you know, he's going, you know, blonde of hair, dark of hair, mm-hmm. black, brown of eyes, dark of hair, brown of eyes. And he goes, he comes into Joffrey, blonde of hair blue of eyes and he's like oh okay that's that's wrong so and the Targaryens are blonde so wouldn't Jon Snow end up actually being uh, but because he but because he's got the the dark of the Stark you know yeah, yeah, yeah. sister yeah. so yeah um you know and that's where I think that comes in um think, again who knows though who, who knows, knows? Exactly. it could go I mean, I the key, the key thing was moving from the baby's eyes to Jon Snow's face yeah. that was them get, but is that too much on the nose yeah is that them saying we're going to make you think it's going to be this yeah. and then we're going to turn around next season and actually we're going to get Jon Snow fuck you in the yeah. Yes. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Um, we'll see we'll have to wait and see I guess um, I'd just like to pimp out my new short film The Little Guy Returns yeah. which uh, me and d like co-made I'm in the first one um, check it out Leo yeah. debuts in the first one and we're filming the third one hopefully within the next month cool so, yeah. um, I will drop the link for The Little Guy Returns in uh, in the feed below he'll also drop the link because I'm going to do it you have to do it drop the link down there for Snow the Product I'm showing her some love because she is fantastic okay we'll drop put the link the in link there now. and also I'm going to put the link uh, to um, our uh, well one of my uh, production um, sites um uh, Deaconary Films is a production company that I've set up with my friends, um, including D-Lan. We've created some short films. Um, Sasha's been influenced in that as well. And um, uh, Leo's been um, acting in a couple of those as well. Um, you'll so understand when you, when, you, when, you see him. when you see that, you'll understand. So yeah, check the link out for Deaconary Films. Check out some of the old stuff that we used to do. Um, hopefully later this year, we'll be um, going back and filming some more stuff. So really looking forward to that. All right. Thanks very much for being here, guys. Um, if you want to, uh, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button below. Um, even if you didn't, hit it anyway. Please um, share our video uh, around. Um, if guys, if they want to get hold of you, where can they find you online? Uh, at Sasha Olari on Twitter and Zito's Gang. Uh, Leo Van Damage on Twitter and Mr. Underscore Ovaltine Jenkins on Instagram. And you can find me at Ken and Apple on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, you can find the show, obviously, uh, on Facebook as well. It's available at Friends Talk Film on Twitter if you want to get in touch with us. And also if you want to email us with um, any suggestions for the show for the um, Channel Flick Challenge or any subjects you'd like us to discuss. And that's um, friendstalkfilm at gmail.com. Um, thanks very much for dealing with being in the background as tech Woo. help producer today. Um, and we'll see you next week. Cool.